Hello everyone. Hope you are doing great. I am Raven Siddhaya, your biology educator only at KLM Institute. Today we are going to look into heredity and evolution. So before knowing heredity evolution, so you should understand this set of diagram. So you already know about genes. So genes is a character or is a factor that decides how your nose is, how big it is, how what is its shape and how big your eyes are or how small your hands are and uh, there are number of parts in our body and each of its size and characteristics are defined by genes. So imagine this as a set of G. So when there is any variation in genes you get a different outcome of your uh, deciding phase or deciding factor. So here you can see here one of the genes, let, let us name this. This is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. So A has changed to red in the next generation or in variation process, it has changed blue to red. Here the A is same, but the C is different. Now it will pass on its changed A gene to its progeny or its offsprings, that is its children. And we can also see the change in D and here we can see the change in B. So this is something called as variation. So these small, small variation has led to our evolution and it is what is carrying so much intellect in our brain. This is how we reach this point of our evolutionary stage that is Homo sapiens. You should all know we are scientifically known as Homo sapiens. Register today at KLM Institute for free online classes, revisions, doubt clearance, private online and offline classes, Olympiad exams and win prizes, scholarships and much more. So if you have interacted with your parents or anyone elder to you, they would have already used the term heredity. So what is heredity? Heredity is something which you get from your parents. So there are some things that are inherited. That is, it can pass on from your parents to you. That is, you to your children. Okay. And so on. It is called inherited traits. So one such example is ear lobe. There are two types of ear lobes here. You can see how is this? This part is free. Okay. I have this kind of ear. So what might be the reason for this? This is because my mother and father, they both have free ear lobes. Some, uh, some people have attached ear, ear lobes like this. This is an inherited trait and how, how is your nose or how big is your hand these are some of example of inherited trait the color of your hair you can see if you are seeing international shows uh, there they are usually blonde that is their color hair color is blonde or uh, some of them have a uh, reddish hair so that is inherited students so you can see the way his beard is growing uh, his son's beard is very similar to each other and they also look very similar to each other and uh, this uh, hair texture of her hair is passed on from her to her daughter so the the facial structure these cheekbones okay and the nose small nose pointy nose is passed on from her to her daughter. So this is heredity students, a character uh, being able to
pass from one generation to the next generation give your imagination wings if you are willing to write something what are you waiting for share your ideas and thoughts let your ideas reach out to millions get your articles published through our blogs for free so before uh, this guy gregor johann mendel there was very less development in the field of genetics because that is why he is known as the father of genetics student so what did he do let's study a brief history about him mendel was educated in a monastery okay uh, it is something similar to some what we have uh, gurukuls what we would have as gurukuls in india they would have monasteries that uh, uh, they would study uh, in a church about all the subjects and went on to study science and mathematics at the university of vienna so what happened there is he failed in science or mathematics but he didn't give up he went back to his monastery and started going growing peas and this shows his interest about science even though he has failed he has a keen interest in science many had studied the inheritance of trait in peas and other organisms earlier but mendel blended his knowledge of science and mathematics and was first one to keep count on the individuals exhibiting a particular trait in each generation so he arrived at the laws of inheritance so this is his greatest work and it is not easy students it is very difficult and he has to wait for generations together to re, uh, reach to the result so what did he say or what are the laws of inheritance say that we will see here so it is said that when two pea plants having two different phylogeny phylogeny is uh, the external appearance phenotypic so this is known as phenotypic tall and short okay if one tall plant is taken and cross bred with a short plant you get all tall of springs most of the people ignored it but mendel came to a conclusion that tall is a dominant trait than short that is why if you mix tall and short you get all tall plants so this is what is happening here cross between visibly contrasting characters just not tall and short you can think of it as a red uh, colored peas or blue colored peas one my, one will be dominant to each other and uh, this is known as cross fertilization so what he did next is he was not satisfied with his result he was confused so he took a tall plant from the previous step here all tall of springs occur so now he takes these two plants and self fertilization uh, is made between them so you can see here you get three tall plants and one short plant so why is this this uh, made him to get to a conclusion that there are some factors in us so he didn't know the word genes he didn't know den- genetic material nothing but he was he was concluded he arrived to a conclusion that there are factors in us that decides how tall or short we are so the letters you see here capital t stands for tall students tall and small t stands for short and he also said that factors occur in pair so if a plant is tall it should be t capital t capital t if a plant is short it should be 
small t small t but also tall is more dominant than the short so when the tall and short mix tall shows but short does not show so capital t and small t can also lead to a tall plant it is when you mix black with white or uh, if you mix dark red with a pink color light pink color the pink completely fades away in the shadow of red it is something like that so he did not stop there he started taking two characters this is known as dihybrid cross that is taking two characters this is a mono hybrid cross so he took uh, two characters he considered two characters that is the size and color of the peas the size of the peas was uh, round that is shape of the peas and the color of the peas was green and in another plant the shape of the peas were wrinkled and it was yellow and later he came to a conclusion that they both form a round and yellow plant so this means round should be dominant to wrinkled and yellow should be dominant to green so here you can see uh, this is known as the self fertilization what we did last time he took round and yellow plants and self fertilized it between themselves so his his result was this you can see here there were nine yellow and round plants and three round and green plants and wrinkled and yellow were three and wrinkled and green was only one so this is something known as phenotypic ratio pheno typic ratio so how do you write it a phenotypic uh, ratio you can write it as 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so the phenotypic ratio what we should get in a dihybrid cross is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 